In the previous example, we worked with data elements. Let's work with some indicators this time. We're going to change the data type to indicators. Let's work with a couple indicators from the immunization group. In particular, we'll look at some immunization coverages. We can select the BCG coverage and the DPT3 coverage. Indicators are made up of typically a numerator, a denominator, and a factor. These are all calculated values compared to data elements, which are the raw data values that we enter during aggregated data entry, for example. If we look at the BCG coverage indicator, this is composed of the number of BCG doses given, this is one data element, divided by the denominator of the population of less than one year, this is another data element, and multiplied by a factor of 100%. This gives us the proportional indicator for BCG coverage. DPT3 is very similar, except we substitute the number of DPT3 doses given for the BCG doses given. This is how indicators and data elements differ within DHIS2. And this is an important concept to ensure that these items are separated. We've now selected our data, so let's go ahead and select our periods. I'll click on periods, and we'll work with the last six months. I'll deselect the last five years, and select the last six months. We selected our what, our when, now let's select our where. In this case, I want the coverage rates by district. I'm going to change my selection method to select levels. And then I'm going to select the district. With training land highlighted, it will select all of the districts within training land. Now remember, from the previous example, the organization units did not appear when I clicked on Update. I first had to adjust the layout of the pivot table. Let's check again to make sure that the organization units are in the right location. We click on Layout and we can see that the organization units are actually being filtered out. We don't want this to happen, so let's move the organization units back down to the row. Remember, we just drag and drop the item. We can also move the periods so this displays in the column rather than the row. Once we've defined our table layout, we can go ahead and update the pivot table. There is now a couple of additional items we might want to remove. In the middle, we have what we refer to as subtotals. In the options, there are a number of different items, including the row totals and subtotals, and column totals and subtotals. In this case, we want to remove them from this table. Column totals are also not very helpful, as we cannot add up percentages. Let's go back and click on options, and remove column totals, row totals, the column subtotals, and the row subtotals. This will remove all of the totals from the table. Let's have a look at a couple of the other options that are available. We can change the look of the table by altering the style options that are available. For example, we can change the display density, the font size, and we can add in a legend set. Creating these legend sets will be discussed in later sessions. These legend sets allow us to apply a color scheme to our data values. Let's click on Update and go through this in a bit more detail. You can see when I update the table, we have a color scheme applied to it. It's also increased in size, and the text size has also increased. For the legend set example that I was referring to earlier, we can see anything below the value of 70% is assigned a red color. Between 70 and 80 is in orange, 80 to 90 is in light blue, and 90 to 100 is in green. Anything above 100 is in gray. This is because we have to check if this data is actually valid. 
In real life settings, you often have immunization coverages that are greater than 100%, so it's a good idea to check on these to see what's going on. Just like before, we can save this table as a favorite. We go to Favorites and click on Save As. We provide it with a name just as before. Remember, we use our username, the program name, what, where, and when. We can also give the table a description if we would like to. We click on Save, and we can see that the table adopts the name of our favorite. Now we can also add a title to this table. Let's just take the text that we've already entered. Go back to our options. We can see there is one extra option to add the table title. We'll just paste in the title and click on Update. You can now see that the table is assigned the title that we've given it in the Options tab.